A couple of days ago, there was a video uploaded by Tony Northrup entitled ISO is totally fake. And in that video, he tried to claim a few different points regarding ISO in modern digital cameras. And some aspects of what he was saying were true that people may not realize. However, there were some aspects that he got woefully wrong. I mean, that video was like a turd in an elevator. It was just wrong on so many different levels. And I worry because Tony and Chelsea are one of the biggest photography YouTube channels around. And a lot of their videos are steered at beginners. A lot of their audience might be beginner photographers. But not only that, the video has now started to go viral being shared out by a lot of different people. And my issue with the video is it spreads a lot of misinformation and inaccurate concepts to people who don't know any better. And it's just going to have a knock on effect with future generation photographers. So the basic idea of the video was pointing out that ISO in digital cameras is nothing like it used to be in film cameras, which is true. ISO in old film cameras refer to how sensitive the film was that you were putting in the camera. With digital cameras, it works differently because you don't change the sensor in the camera. When you change the sensitivity settings, you're not actually changing the sensitivity of the sensor. So Tony made a statement in the video, which is correct, that when you take in a picture, regardless of what ISO you set the camera at, what the camera sees, the the kind of light that the camera captures doesn't change. However, Tony then goes on to paint the picture, not only suggest, but outright state that increasing the ISO in camera is exactly the same and gives you the same results as just increasing the exposure in post-production in Lightroom or Photoshop, for example. The ISO is just completely arbitrary and decided in post. And you could, if you wanted to, just use the base ISO for everything and then adjust it up later in post. And that is flat out wrong. For starters, in Tony's own video, he gave an example of two identical images, but shot at different ISOs and the darker image he brightened up in post processing. He then just casually announces that the two images look exactly the same. Except you can clearly see there is more visible noise in the adjusted post-processed image than there is in the straight out of camera image. Now to understand why Tony's actually incorrect with what he's saying, you need to understand how a camera captures an image. So obviously you have the camera sensor which is made up of millions of individual photosites. These photosites capture light. Light is photons. So during an exposure, photons will be hitting each of these photosites. The photons hit in the photosites will generate an electrical charge in each of the photosites. So the more photons that hit an individual photosite, the greater the charge that it's going to produce. Once the exposure is finished, the camera will read the values for the amount of charge that each photosite has generated. This will give it an analog signal of how much voltage has been captured in the various parts of the picture. That signal is then sent to an AD converter. AD stands for analog to digital, so it converts the analog voltage signal to a digital signal that it can then save as a digital file that your computer that can then read. So if you shoot at ISO 100, the lowest native ISO setting that your camera has, that signal is taken straight from the sensor, passed to the AD converter where it's converted to a digital signal, then passed off to the processor to be processed. However, if you're shooting at non-native ISOs, then that signal is boosted. But the signal is boosted before it hits the AD converter. So the camera actually multiplies the voltage readings of the original signal. That boosted analog signal is then converted to digital and passed off to be saved. Passing the signal around a camera is going to introduce interference. So by boosting the signal as soon as it comes off the sensor, you boost the signal before all that extra interference gets added. If you boost it after it's been converted to a digital signal, you're then boosting all the additional interference as well. It's why telecommunications and internet signals are boosted before they get to you rather than afterwards, because by boosting it sooner, you get a cleaner signal. Now, he does go on to mention about isolar sensors or ISO invariant sensors, which are sensors that are supposed to give you 
the same results regardless of whether you boost the ISO in camera or whether you boost the exposure in post. However, no consumer camera on the market that I can think of is truly ISO invariant all the way across the spectrum. The a7 III is ISO invariant, but only from ISO 800 upwards. So here's a, an example test using the a7 III. Now the initial exposure was shot at ISO 1600 with a correct exposure. I then reduced the ISO in one full stop increments down to ISO 100. So that's four stops back. And I shot one stop overs up to 102,400. So I had a full range of exposures that I then put into Lightroom and evened them out. And whilst from a zoomed out perspective, there doesn't seem to be a huge difference in the noise performance between each of the shots. Once you zoom in though, you can clearly see that there is more noise in the ISO 100 shot that's been boosted than there is in the natively shot ISO 1600 shot. You also get other problems like banding and color shifts from the ISO 100 shot that you don't see in the ISO 1600 shot. So this notion that Tony put out there and that you can just shoot everything at ISO 100 and not worry about it and fix it all in post later is out and out fault. And on the topic of ISO 100 and really the whole reason why Tony put that video up in the first place is because ISO 100 gives you different results from different cameras. So if you take multiple cameras and set them all to ISO 100, how it exposes the image is going to be different. And that's correct. Not because ISO is totally fake, but because ISO is different now to what it was in the film era. ISO is no longer a standardization of sensitivity because there is no sensitivity. Base ISO in a camera these days is just what the camera will naturally see without any additional signal boosting. It's going to vary from camera to camera because every different camera sensor is different. Bearing in mind that sensors have multiple layers of glass over the top of them as well. So if you have a sensor that has better light transmission than a different sensor, then the image that it natively produces is going to be brighter. Likewise, a sensor with worse light transmission is naturally going to produce a darker image at ISO 100, which means you're then gonna have to boost it more to get the exposure matching. Camera manufacturers simply keep everything at ISO 100 and in third stop increments because it's uniform for everybody to understand. It would just be far too confusing if everything was given an actual ISO value. But let's be honest, nothing in cameras these days is ever entirely accurate. Focal lengths are never entirely accurate. They're always roughly rounded up. F-stop numbers are theoretical values for how much light should be getting through the lens, but lenses with the same F-stop value can have different amounts of light transmission. I will be amazed if camera shutter speeds are entirely accurate. Is a 1 400th of a second shutter actually exposing a sensor for exactly a 400th of a second? I highly doubt it. Which is another factor to consider in the results that Tony was showing. Because he was comparing up different cameras with presumably different lenses as well. So using different lenses could affect the amount of light getting through. Different cameras, as well as having different ISO values, could also have slight variations in their shutter speed, even at the same settings. So at the end of the day, everything about cameras is roughly rounded up, but then in the real world, that doesn't actually affect you all that much because you're not going to copy other people's settings exactly. You're going to change the settings based off your own situation. So it doesn't actually affect anybody. However, it will affect you if you try shooting everything at ISO 100 and then just brighten them up in Lightroom later. So, don't. But that's it for this video. If you have any questions or queries, comment boxes down below. Thank you so much for stopping by and hopefully I will see you in the next video.